two minute movie trailer is all you need to learn new words and how to use them. Let's break down the trailer for Jurassic World and see how many words you can learn without even trying. Il n'est pas question de contrôle. On reste là. All right, so in the first scene, we see that he is fending off these dinosaurs, and he says, Il n'est pas question de contrôle. Mm. So in this case, you can look at each word and see its translation. We see that il, in this case, doesn't mean he. It's a personal pronoun, but it means it. And then n'est pas, we're just negating être, so it's not a question of contrôle. So this is one of those sentences that honestly translates quite easily to English. And then you'll always have the English translation here as a reference. What I try to make sure is that I don't really look at the English translation unless I absolutely need it. And it's a good practice to see if you can go through each word before looking at the translation. But it's always here to help you. So this is a pretty simple phrase once again, reste là. Yes. And you see reste in the imperative or l'imperatif. So he's telling the dinosaurs, stay rest. there. So it's the you uh, form, the informal singular form, you stay there. So in imperative, we don't say the subject pronoun, we just say the verb. So it's just reste. No. And one other thing I want to point out is that I used to actually get very confused by la because it's used in many contexts. So in some cases, it'll mean there, like in this case, reste là. Um, but it can also mean here, like if um, someone's asking where you are and you just say je suis là, then that means yeah. I'm here. So this depends on context. Of course, it's not too confusing. You can see by his hand gesture that he probably means there. C'est une relation. Basé sur le respect. C'est une relation. C'est une relation basée sur le respect. So here we have some agreements going on. C'est is just it is or it's. Une relation. So this is a relationship. Um, and this is kind of a cognate, which is nice. And that's also why I like learning French a lot and also avoiding the subtitles is because you tend to rely on the subtitles, but honestly, there's a lot of words that are very similar and you can figure them out very easily. So une relation. Basé. Now, basé is actually a verb, and it's a verbal adjective. So it's turned into an adjective, but it's originating from a verb. So since it's an adjective, you do have to agree it with basé. une relation. So this is just done by adding an e at the end. C'est une relation basée sur le respect. Um, one thing I want to note is that respect. respect or respect is, again, a cognate, but it's pronounced very differently. And that's also why I like having this guide here to make sure that you're hearing and saying the pronunciation correctly. Respect. Respect. Um, and that's really important because there's lots of French words that look like English words but are pronounced quite differently. Ces animaux se disent, je dois manger. Ces animaux se disent, je dois manger. C'est means these or those, and you can use them for masculine or feminine or mixed gender subjects. Um, so it's just like les or des, um, and it means these or those. And then ces animaux se disent. Se disent comes from the verb se dire, to say to yourself. You can actually add se and the reflexive pronouns to lots of verbs to turn them into a reflexive verb. So you probably learned the verb dire and just saying se dire changes to say to, to say to oneself. And then this is really small, I want to just point it out. The quotation mark in French is actually different. It's these two little um, little arrows, and I think it's quite cute. There's also a space in between French um, punctuation, and so that's that's minor, but it's also important if you're focusing on written language and reading the language. And then the other thing I want to note is je dois manger. Since dois uh, is conjugated devoir, then manger stays in the infinitive form. Manger. And as a reminder, dois. je dois means I have to or I must. Je dois chasser. Je dois chasser. Je dois chasser. Je dois chasser. Chasser. Chasser is a verb that you might not know. It means to hunt. Je dois... Il y a bien de ces besoins que vous ressentez aussi. Je dois... And then he's describing this physical action and then he uses a phrase, il y a bien de. And bien I de. really like learning expressions like this, bien de, beaucoup de, um, or beaucoup because they're very useful for diversifying the way you express 
uh, very common things like many. Many can get quite boring in English as we repeat it, so we have other words like we see here quite a few. And it's the same in French. It's nice to have lots of different ways to say beaucoup, bien de, assez. Um, there's lots of words that express similar things, and this will really help you diversify your French vocabulary. We see c'est again, bien de ses besoins, que. This que, uh, yeah. we will see later in this trailer, has lots of meanings. So in this case, we have it noted here, it's a relative pronoun. And this que is referring to what was said before. So there's a lot of things that you probably feel as well. Um, so this que is going to show up yeah. a few more times in this trailer and we'll see different translations for it. And I would encourage you not to think too yeah. much about what it's technically called and what, you know, the relative pronoun aspect. It really functions the same way that we use that in English or which. Yeah. Um, it's just referring to something that was said before. Now, vous ressentez aussi. Ressenter is Ressentir. comes from the verb ressentir, and this brings up a little bit of um, confusion with the French language. We have the verbs ressentir, sentir, and se sentir, and these all mean slightly different things. So ressentir has to do with feelings internally, and some would say that it's to describe some ressentir. strong emotions. Um, and then se sentir is similar. It also has to do with emotional feelings, but it's more to do with a condition or a state of mind. Um, this is more of like a one-time feeling, whereas sentir is like a continual emotion almost. And then sentir is quite different. It's to do with external feelings, things that you're physically touching. And sentir can also mean to smell. Chaque fois que nous dévoilons une nouvelle attraction, la fréquentation augmente. Chaque okay, fois que nous... this is a great example for using words that look similar to English words to learn words that don't look similar to English words. So let's just take the first part of the sentence. Chaque fois que nous dévoilons une nouvelle attraction. So attraction is a cognate. Attraction. We can see that it means attraction. And we can also look at the trailer and see them... They're unveiling things. They're showing um, people seeing different um, animals and exhibits, basically. So we can guess attraction. Um, again, I know the translation's here, but I'm showing you just ways to kind of use these tools that you have to build your skills so that you don't have to use them in the future. So une nouvelle attraction. Um, attraction. Quick note, attraction is feminine. So we have une and nouvelle. Now, chaque fois... With attraction or exhibit, there's only a few words that go with it. So here, unveil is almost intuitive. You almost know, oh yes, you unveil a new attraction. And that's a great way to learn verbs in uh, pair with nouns. Dévoilons une attraction. That's a great way to keep that in your head instead of learning dévoiler or dévoilons separate from attraction. Continuing on, la fréquentation, this is kind of a false friend in my opinion. It doesn't exactly look like an English word, but on first glance, you would probably guess that it means frequency, but this means com something completely different. It means the number of visitors or the patronage. So make sure um, you are looking up words even though they do look similar. It's a great, of course, attraction is a cognate, but I would still look it up if you found it in a different context. La fréquentation augmente, and augmente, augmente means to rise or increase. So these underlined words are the words that the system thinks that you may not know, and it's a good clue um, if you are learning these words or you're finding them difficult. You can go ahead and add them to a flashcard set if you want. I could make a new flashcard set and call it Jurassic World. And this just helps you keep track of words that you're learning. I really like learning interjections like this because it really comes handy when you're trying to sound very natural in French. Énorme. Uh, C'est énorme. Um, this kind of sounds like enormous, which, you know, doesn't really make sense in an English context, but in French, énorme is an informal way of saying something's awesome, it's amazing, it's huge. And we can really see how it fits in this context. And even the literal meaning is huge or enormous, but we can see from this video, this little clip, that they're all clapping for like a performance or a spectacle and expressing how amazing 
It is. La direction a estimé que des mélanges génétiques boosteraient l'effet wow. La direction a estimé. This is one of those sentences that looks a lot more complicated than it really is. Um, let's start at the beginning. La direction. This is another false friend. Direction does not mean the direction in this case. It means the management or the board of directors. So you can think of it as who is literally directing um, the directors. A estimer. Direction. Now, since it's la direction, we can see that this looks like a lot of people. But since the board of directors, la direction, is one unit, we use a estimer. We don't say on estimer. Um, it's considered singular because it's one body. Estimé, this is the past participle of estimé. And again, this is a little bit of another false friend because it doesn't quite translate to estimated. It means felt, considered, thought. Que? Que. Now we have another que here. This is not a relative pronoun. This just means that. Um, and if, you know, if you understand it well with relative pronoun versus conjunction, that is the difference between the que that we saw before and the que that we're seeing now. But if you, it just makes sense to you to say they're both that. Mm -hmm. uh, that is also correct. They're just, these two that's are different parts of speech. And you might not realize that. So it's helpful to just be aware of that. Les mélanges génétiques. Mélange. So this is another underlined word, so you may not know it. Mélange means mix or mixture or blend. And mélange génétique. So what we can see is happening here is that they're talking about something related to genetic modification. It says genetic blending. Boosterait Boosterait. is in le conditionnel. So now since les mélanges génétiques is a plural, Boosterait. you're going to use the il, elle form, boosterait. And conditionnel is used to explain things that are hypothetical. So in this case, it means would boost. And this is a very cute verb, I would say, because we can see the little uh, American or like English influence boost but it's been turned into a French verb and this is increasingly common especially in contemporary French and I think it's just beautiful how language evolves like this and yeah we can see the influence right here booster for the il elle form you add the ending a e i n t to just the infinitive of the verb to form conditionnel l'effet wow this L apostrophe is just a uh, article. Um, wow. And then wow, this is another thing I like to look at. Wow is an interjection. And we can see that even in French, you have a different spelling for wow. And it wow. reflects the way you say wow. And we can hear that in the trailer as well. It's not wow, it's wow, uh, which I think is very important to know when you're learning another language. Ce sont des dinos, effet wow déjà garanti. Ce sont des dinos, effet. Ce sont, ce is, this is a singular form of what we saw before of ce. Ce sont, these are, or they are, des dinos. Ce sont des dinos. Here we use des because we're just talking about in general, they're dinosaurs. These are the dinosaurs that, etc., etc. They're just referring to the dinosaurs in general. Les, les faits wow. Et déjà garanti. Garanti comes from the verb garantir, and this is the past participle, so it means guaranteed. And you may have heard déjà vu as a phrase in English déjà. that we use pretty frequently. So déjà means already. So here we're saying that they're dinosaurs. The wow effect is already guaranteed. We don't need to... He's basically implying they don't need to do any genetic modification. On l'a conçu plus imposante que le T-Rex. On l'a conçu plus imposante. So here, this sentence might confuse you a little, and I want you to remember that we're watching a trailer, so there's going to be some gaps in information, and you're going to have to use some context clues to figure out what those gaps are. So here, this le, elle apostrophe is different from this elle apostrophe. This is a definite article. This is a direct object pronoun. So they are referring to basically a different dinosaur, who is the genetically modified dinosaur, I'm assuming. And since it, this is a passé composé uh, construction, on, on a conçu, since the direct object pronoun goes before, um, or since we're using a direct object pronoun rather than putting the direct object after the passé composé, you must agree the direct object, uh, you must agree the verb with the direct object pronoun. So, 
Here, they're referring to a female dinosaur. So this L apostrophe stands for la, the direct object pronoun la. And since that's feminine, we have an E at the end of conçu. If they were to just say on a conçu with a direct object afterwards, this conçu would stay masculine. It would not be agreed to the direct object because it comes after. Now here, plus imposante. This means imposante. imposing or impressive, and we have it agreed with the E at the end, again, to that female dinosaur that they're referring to. And now we have a third que. definition of que, and here it means than. So this is comparing, and we can see that in this example construction here, a plus adjective plus adverb plus que plus b. So they're saying plus imposante que le T-Rex. So they're saying this dinosaur is more impressive than the T-Rex. Que le T-Rex. Qu'est devenu sa sœur? Qu'est devenu sa sœur? Qu'est devenu sa sœur? Watching movies is a great way to see how constructions that you might not always use very frequently are used, just so you're aware that they exist. Que is pretty uncommon from my experience, but we can just look at the definition here. It's nothing you haven't seen before. What? Uh, you might recognize this from qu'est-ce que c'est? This is the first part of qu'est-ce que c'est? What is it that it is? So this is the what part, que. And devenu is one of the verbs part of Dr. And Mrs. Vandertramp, or devenir. Um, and this means to become, since it's part of Dr. And Mrs. Vandertramp, it's conjugated in passé composé with être instead of avoir. So que devenu. And they're still referring to this female dinosaur, so um, they have an E at the end to agree the passé composé, because it's conjugated with être. Sa sœur, her sister. Elle l'a dévoré. Elle l'a dévoré. So in this sentence, we have elle l'a dévoré. So they're talking about what happened to her sister. Now they're directly referring to this female dinosaur that they keep talking about, the genetically modified one. Elle, she, la dévorée. So again, we see the example that I was talking about before. We have a direct object pronoun here, la. And because it goes before the verb, elle la dévorée, we have to agree dévorée with what they're referring to. And this la refers to the sister. So the genetically modified, let's walk through it together. The genetically modified dinosaur devoured her sister. Something I want to reiterate is that if there's a direct object before, you agree the verb no matter if it's conjugated with être or avoir. In this example, it's uh, agreed because it's with être. And usually verbs with avoir are not agreed, but because there's a direct object before, it is here. Nous avons un sujet hors confinement. Nous avons un sujet hors confinement. This is a very simple sentence construction. Nous avons un sujet. We have a subject. Hors confinement. This might oh. just be a word that you don't know. Outside. Hors confinement. And I'm confinement. sure you know the word confinement by now if you've been engaging with any French vlogs or media. Confinement just means confinement or lockdown. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? This is pretty simple. Qu'est-ce que c'est? This is probably one of the easiest questions that you learn. What is it? And as we can see from this context, you can use this in context where there is physically something in front of you or just in general, like what's going on? What is it? What's wrong? Son implant GPS, elle se l'est arrachée. Son implant GPS. Now I strongly encourage you to learn the French alphabet because things like this, GPS, can really trip you up if you don't have a subtitle aid or if you're not used to hearing it. One of the most confusing things is that in French, G is G and J is J, so this could really confuse you because J could sound like J apostrophe A I. So I encourage you to learn the French alphabet, know what it is, GPS. Okay, and then this verb construction is to rip something off oneself. And the grammar tip here just wants you to know that you won't see the S and E separate unless there is a direct object pronoun over here, as we can see in the example. Um, this is another one of those verbs arraché. that you might not use in your day-to-day, -day, but you should probably know. Se l'est arraché. Se l'est arraché. Comment a-t-elle pu y penser? 
So for this sentence, I want to point out that we have some inversion going on here. El a is flipped to a tel, and since you can't really say a el, it's a bit difficult for it to flow. You'll see this t added here. Sí. It, it's just a particle. It doesn't have any meaning. Um, it's also used with il, a til, a tel, and it just helps things flow better. Um, so if you're having trouble figuring this out, it's just el a pu. Pu is the past participle okay. for pouvoir, to be able to do something. And then y penser. Y is a bit of a tricky pronoun. In this context, it's translated as it. And this is one of those pronouns that you're going to have to practice a little bit, see it in context. What I encourage you to do is use tools like this video dictionary and just see what context it appears in. And you'll get a sense for when it's used as it, when it's used in the place of a place. Um, this is a bit of a versatile pronoun. Penser. Pense. Uh, again, we have um, elle a pu conjugated, so the second verb, penser, is not conjugated. Elle s'est rappelée où on avait posé. Elle s'est rappelée où on avait posé. Elle s'est rappelée. She remembered or she reminded herself, if you want a more literal context. This directly translates to remember. Où on l'avait posé. Où with this accent grave on the U means where versus où without the accent means or. So this is something you should keep in mind. If you have subtitles, of course it's useful, but if you don't, you might get confused. Um, so make sure you're aware of the different words that each sound could represent. Où on l'avait posé. Since we're dealing with a trailer here, again, we don't exactly know what this le is referring to. Um, avait posé is in plus que parfait. Plus que parfait is the tense that you use to say you had done something, you had placed in this case. Posé has a lot of different meanings, I'll just say that. So in this context, you're going to learn it as avait posé, I, we had placed. And just to note, on in this case on. means we. This is by far the most frequent usage of on. Um, it's generally taught as a general pronoun or means one, but on. in all across French media and spoken French, you use on as a way of saying we. Oh no. Elle tue pour le plaisir. Oh no. Here's another verb that you may not know, tuer. Si. Um, so hopefully you don't use this too much in your day-to-day -day life, but tuer means to kill. And pour le plaisir is a pretty frequently used phrase that means for pleasure. So they're pretty distressed that this dinosaur is killing for pleasure. Vous avez 20 visiteurs. Vous avez 20 visiteurs. This is a pretty simple sentence. You have 20,000 visitors. Um, and it's good to hear some numbers because I know those are difficult for learners. Vous n'avez plus, plus de bateau. In this, I want to highlight that when you are using uh, no more or never or there's no one, this is a negative verb construction, so you don't use pas. You do n apostrophe or ne, and then instead of saying vous n'avez pas, then you use the adverb that you want to express. So, vous n'avez plus, uh, you don't have any more. And bateau means bateau. boats. So, this is another example for this is il n'y a personne. You don't say il n'y a pas personne. You just say il n'y a personne because the personne is kind of the second part of the negation. Et pas les armes nécessaires. Et pas les armes nécessaires. Et pas les armes nécessaires. Again, a simple sentence. Arme is Arme. Uh, cognate, means weapons. And since this is plural and arm is arme. Uh, feminine, um, we have nécessaire here. Here, nécessaire, um, the general form is without this s, so the difference between the masculine and the feminine is not different. Nécessaire. Si on fait ça, on le fait à ma manière. Si on fait ça. In this context, si means si. if. There is a few other meanings for si as well, um, but here it's posed as if we do this. Uh, this or that, and we can see we added it earlier. Um, on le fait. So this le refers to this it. It's a direct object pronoun. On le fait à ma manière. So one thing I want to point out is that here in English, we see that it's we do it my way. Um, you can just say, if we translated this directly, it would be on le fait ma manière. But that doesn't make any sense in French, so you have to add this uh, preposition oh. a. Uh, to connect the thought, à ma manière, à, and a characteristic. 
and we can see a grammar tip here if you want to go more in depth. La cible means the target. En visuel, this visuel. is in view, and in context, we have it on screen. On allume. On allume. You may have just heard this as on allume, but once you see the translation um, or the transcription as on l'allume, then you can go back and play the video clip again and see if you can listen for this L. On allume. And that's a good way to train your ear to listen for the nuances of the French language because often it goes very fast or the pronunciation is very squished together. So you need to get used to hearing these little particles because they do affect the meaning of the sentences. Allume. Allume. Uh, this is the verb allume. And one good way to remember this is we can see in this example sentence. Lumière means light. And allume is to light something. Il y a un problème. Ils communiquent entre eux. Il y a un problème. Ils communiquent entre eux. Il y a un problème. Pretty simple. There is a problem. Problem. Ils communiquent entre eux. Entre eux means amongst entre. themselves. And this is almost a case of liaison, basically. You don't say entre eux. It's just connected. Entre eux. Mal. Ça n'est jamais qu'un animal. Ça n'est jamais qu'un Ça n'est jamais que has a bit of a intranslatable meaning directly. It's more of a phrase and it's translated in many ways. So it really depends on context. In this one, it's to mean it's only just an animal. So she's trying to convince uh, the main character it's just an animal. And again, if you've seen the movie, then you probably know what the context is. Um, but we're not getting the full context from the trailer. And then in, in contrast, this is what his retaliation is. D'une intelligence hors norme. D'une intelligence hors norme. D'une intelligence hors norme. So we learned that hors means outside. So we can see how we use this in the translation for this sentence. Norme is norme. the norm or the standard. Um, and I really like putting these translations together. This is, of norme. course, a definition and context. But the overall translation is going to depend on the entire sentence. So you can put it together and see how... Words are being translated, and you'll get a better idea of how to understand French media a lot better. So, we could directly translate this as of an intelligence outside the norms, but you know that he's trying to say it's extraordinarily intelligent, or their brains are just out of this world. Uh, something along those lines. D'une intelligence hors norme. And that's basically the trailer. If you like this video, be sure to check out the free PDF linked below that gives you a full breakdown on how to get the most out of watching dubbed English movies. And if you think you're ready to try out your French skills with a French movie, check out our deep dive lesson into the trailer of L'Heure de la Sortie.